So welcome everyone to the Town of Arlington's 215th annual town meeting. Uh, before we begin tonight, I want to acknowledge that the decision to go with a remote town meeting was a difficult one. And I recognize for a lot of folks, a remote meeting isn't their first choice. For others, news of a remote meeting has come as a relief for their own safety or the safety of members of their households. It seems that these days, lots of issues deeply divide us. And while that creates challenges, it also creates opportunities, like the opportunity to find the humanity in each other, uh, to give folks the benefit of the doubt, uh, especially those we disagree with, and the opportunity to embrace the better angels of our nature for the sake of the public that we serve together. I wanna to thank my predecessors, uh, Mr. Warden and Mr. Leone, who have left uh, large shoes to fill. All of us here tonight, regardless of our role or office, uh, we're all temporary stewards of this town government, and we honor and acknowledge those who have served before us, and we welcome those who will come after us. At this time, I'd like, to, like us to remember those town meeting members and their spouses who've passed in the last year. Uh, Bill Hayward, Nancy Ortwing, Lyman Judd, Brian Rerig, Roger Barnaby, uh, Janet Chaput, wife of the late uh, town meeting member Roland Chaput, Elaine Shea, wife of the late town meeting member Bill Shea, and Beatrice Barber, wife of the late town meeting member Harry Barber. Um, and I know a lot of us here tonight, like, like uh, that, that some of these folks have uh, touched our lives in uh, in some profound ways, either, either as like a, a like a mentor or a friend. Um, and so we, we honor their memory and Roger Barnaby in particular, I know was responsible years ago for an article that allowed for uh, alcohol to be served at restaurants in Arlington. So any of those, anyone who has a, a drink, a non-alcoholic beverage, uh, uh, respectfully, uh, raise a glass uh, to Mr. Barnaby for his contributions to the town tonight. So let's now take a, a moment of silence to remember and honor the memory of, of all these um, Arlingtonians. Great, thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Reverend Erica Richmond, uh, who will present our invocation tonight. Reverend. Let's see, is the Reverend able to uh, Unmute. I unmute, but I can't, uh, I don't have permission to show my video if someone wants to. Oh, is, uh, is, it, is someone on the, let's say, is someone able to uh, promote Erica's connection to the panel? There we go. We can see you now. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm uh, Reverend Erica Richmond. I am one of the ministers at the First Parish Congregation in Arlington, right uh, in the town center. It is an honor to be with all of you tonight. I thank you for the invitation to give this invocation. I appreciate that our moderator began with looking towards our past, those who have shaped who we are today. It is good and right to remember those who have passed on, just as it is good and right to remember the history of our town. I wanna acknowledge that we are on tribal land of the Massachusetts people. Even in our uh, history, it's important to remember what is complicated. I also wanna name that we are in the middle of Ramadan. If you are observing Ramadan, a happy Ramadan to you. We just finished Passover and Easter and spring. There are many holy and holidays for many folks and many faiths. So whatever you celebrate or whatever you are bringing here tonight, I am glad you are with us. I invite you to take a deep breath, maybe stretch and get comfortable. I know you have a lot ahead of you and I invite us to begin with a moment of invocation and meditation. Whatever a posture of prayer is for you, I invite you into that in this moment. Spirit 
of life and love. Be with each of us as the sacred work of democracy begins. The task of our elected leaders is not always an easy one. During this third year of pandemic, many of us are short on time, short on patience, short on our capacity to hear one another well. So let us begin this evening with gratitude, thankfulness for each other's willingness to serve, willingness to show up, willingness to create a better, more just, more abundant world. These are the days we have been given. There is so much to fear in our world so much to shield from our children. Too many of our friends and neighbors can't make ends meet, can't protect their families from racism or xenophobia, can't feel safe in their own homes. Tonight, we especially send prayers to the people of Ukraine and to all nations and territories experiencing violence and conflict. There are so many reasons not to trust one another, and yet we know that our better selves can create love, can dismantle systems of harm, and make connections across differences. May we be called forward by hope, May we recognize a hand outstretched. May we witness the currents of love and care underneath bouts of misunderstanding and disagreement. These are the days we have been given. May we trust in goodness and mercy believing in the noble and humble intentions of one another. This is a prayer that even in uncertainty knows a path will unfold. Another way is possible. This is not an invocation of Pollyanna sensibilities. No, this is a radical hope born out of hard times born out of struggle. May we be emboldened by those who have gone before us. The earth cries out for something new. In our small corner of the globe, may we do all that we can to make that so. These are the days we have been given. Let us be proud of what we can accomplish together. Blessed be and amen. Great, thank you, Reverend. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, next on the agenda, we're gonna do the swearing in for any uh, newly elected or newly appointed uh, town meeting members. Um, so can we bring up the oath of office? Okay, so if you are newly elected or newly appointed uh, and have not been sworn in yet as a town meeting member, uh, please, uh, well, you can choose to rise or not, but um, uh, so just repeat after me. I, state your name, will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters before town meeting and vote in the best interests of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. 
I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, the town manager act and the general laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. Thank you, you are now sworn in as town meeting members. Uh, so let's, let's, see. let's move on now to the, um, uh, we have a video recording from a few years ago of the Monotomy Minutemen uh, who would normally, if we were at an in-person meeting, would be presenting this in front of us uh, all live, uh, but we'll play that video and look forward to hopefully next year when we'll be able to see this performance live at Town Hall. Gentlemen, please rise. Whenever you're ready.
Great, thank you. Um, so next we're going to vote to authorize a virtual town meeting. Um, and uh, what this means is that uh, town meeting as a body needs to vote with a majority vote on whether to continue the proceedings of this meeting uh, remotely or not. And uh, I'll just briefly explain what that means, uh, which is that um, uh, town meeting members will now uh, vote on, this is kind of the last hurdle, like when I, when I decided a couple of weeks ago uh, to kind of start the process of preparing for a remote town meeting, I forwarded that request to the select board, they approved it um, with a majority of uh, select board uh, members voting, and now it comes before town meeting to vote on this, and this is the, like the final procedural step. And so if this vote succeeds, then we'll continue with town meeting in this virtual uh, format. And if the vote fails, uh, then we're kind of back to the drawing board and we have to figure out a different way of proceeding um, with only being able to do so in person. And we'll have to figure out what that means. Um, so uh, I will, so this is a, a bit, um, uh, unconventional procedurally because this isn't how most of our votes and debate will work. Uh, so this is kind of a, a one-off situation that's unique uh, to uh, uh, yeah, to this particular vote. Um, so I'm trying to correct my view here so I could see what everyone else is seeing. Okay. Well. Okay, here we go. And let's see. And can we bring up the uh, Julie, after you're, you're done bringing up the opening the vote, can you also show the, um, uh, let's see, the, the text, it's a very short piece of text uh, associated with this vote from uh, the annotated warrant, it's basically just like a one liner, basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's the one that, yeah, it's, it just says vote, yep. Yeah. Okay, um, so, right, so here's the reference to Massachusetts general laws that uh, that uh, will allow us to proceed with a, a remote town meeting if this, this, this vote is successful. Um, and the short version of the story is that if, you know, if the vote fails, uh, there are um, a number of ways that we can proceed, uh, uh, one of which is that we would adjourn this meeting uh, immediately, and then a bunch of us would go off and scramble to figure out uh, how to do, like one possibility is an abbreviated town meeting, uh, like we did, if you remember, um, a couple of years ago on the, on the high school football field, where we would basically address uh, the most urgent and critical articles, and we would postpone everything else uh, to like a, a special town meeting uh, at some point later in the year. Uh, that's, that's one way that we could proceed. Uh, I would prefer that we... Uh, uh, this, uh, approve this vote, and then we can continue on uh, remotely for the remainder of this meeting. And so something else that's a bit uh, kind of uh, unconventional about this is that I will open up um, uh, the, let's see, we have a, uh, I'll open up the speaker queue in a moment uh, for folks um, to ask questions that either I or town council or others might be able to answer uh, about the implications of voting yes or no on this vote, because it is a bit unconventional, because we're voting on how we're going to proceed in the format of this meeting or not. Um, it's, it's not a typical kind of policy article that, that we would usually take up. And so I do want to give folks an opportunity to ask questions about that. Uh, and I, I, I do um, uh, want to be clear that this is not a, uh, uh, this is not a, a an opportunity for folks to speak on um, the merits of meeting in person versus the merits uh, 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 or issues of meeting remotely, but to ask questions about procedurally what it means uh, if this vote fails, because that's kind of a subtle and complicated thing that I wanna make sure everyone has an understanding of before we go ahead and vote. Um, and so can we, let's see, I see that debate is closed here. Is there, is there a way for us to, uh, open up debate on this so that we can, yeah. And let's see, I see that uh, we have a, a point of order 
right now. So why don't we take that and then I'll also, uh, before we do uh, take Mr. Wagner's point of order, I do wanna be clear, uh, not just for, for this vote, but through the remainder of the meeting, uh, that uh, I'm gonna be uh, fairly um, uh, restrictive about what we allow for points of order, because uh, points of order are really about um, uh, informing the meeting about things that prevent us from kind of going off the rails procedurally. Um, and it's not an opportunity for folks to weigh in about their, their opinions on things, uh, but it's really about keeping the, the meeting on track from a procedural perspective. Uh, and so if there is abuse of point of order, and we've had, we've had that in recent years, um, uh, then I'll have to take measures to potentially um, rate limit or restrict the, the use on an individual basis. Uh, if, if particular, if individual members are, in my view, abusing the point of order mechanism. So hopefully it doesn't come to that um, and that we're using it just for procedural matters. Um, uh, so let's, let's take Mr. Wagner's point of order. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Thank you. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. We are enjoying seeing you and uh, similar to uh, a point of order or personal privilege, as in the room is too hot. I cannot understand what the person is saying because the microphone is not working. I would like to speak for all of the town meeting members here that we deserve to see each other regardless of what our positions are. It is not right two years into town meeting to have technical or preference issues to keep us from being seen. Please make sure that as soon as possible, we can be seen this year and definitely next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Um, so I'll just briefly respond to that, that my intention when we when I first started looking into uh, the prospects of a, a remote town meeting, um, which was basically going back about two and a half, almost three weeks ago, um, uh, having been sworn in basically three weeks and uh, uh, 11 and a half hours ago, um, that uh, I was really interested in the possibility that if we were going to do remote, that we would allow town meeting members to show video. And I won't go into the details as to why we decided not to go that route, um, but there were uh, technical obstacles in how a Zoom webinar um, works and the promotion of individuals from attendees to the panel. And I don't wanna bore everyone with the details with that. I'm happy to take that issue offline uh, and discuss that in another uh, venue. Okay, so we have a, a, a second point of order, uh, Mr. Warden. And, uh, Please state your name and precinct number. John Gordon, precinct eight. Am I audible? I can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you. No, I, 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 the point of order is a question of, are you going to allow people to speak to the merits of, of your proposition? Um, I will allow people to ask questions about the implications of the, the votes. You're not really going to have a, 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 any 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 opportunity for people to state their preferences uh, for for or against the virtual meeting? Uh, not in this format at this time, no. Um, and the reason for that, uh, I feel, is that the state does not uh, the state and um, town council can uh, can weigh on when weigh in on this. I, I spoke with town council uh, earlier. Uh, state law does. Uh, does, does not specify uh, when when this clause is invoked, uh, like for attempting to to uh, proceed with a with a remote town meeting, um, does not specify whether a debate is required uh, at town meeting. Just that a majority vote is required. Um, we, we 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 debate everything else. Yeah, this, this is a very important issue. It is, and under the circumstances, because this is. Um, this is essentially a uh, a meta political issue rather than a traditional political issue. Meta political being that it's it's about how the meeting itself is conducted. Um, that it's really standing on different procedural ground than a typical article, which is debating the merits uh, or, or otherwise of uh, of a, uh, a, a legislative or policy issue. Um, and this is just about whether to proceed with the meeting. And so it's it's kind of on uh, untested ground. Um, if I were moderator, I'd, I'd allow the town meeting to vote on how how, how they're going to meet. Right. And so so we are going to vote on how we're going to meet. Um, I'm just restricting the uh, the speaking to questions about the uh, per, uh, the procedural aspects of what it would mean uh, if if this vote fails, because that might not be clear to a lot of folks. 
Um, so, but I, I, I take your point and uh, I appreciate your, your perspective. Um, so, uh, is there anything else, Mr. Warden? Say, so do we do we still have Mr. Warden there? Um, I I think this meeting is is supposed to vote on. We we should be allowed to 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 discuss it. We're not we're not the Chinese Communist Parliament. Uh, no, no, we're not, and that's why everyone gets a vote. And uh, and I'm happy to entertain questions uh, in the regular uh, speaking queue for folks uh, who have questions about what it means to proceed or not proceed. Um, um, okay, great, thank you. Uh, do, do we? Um, uh, so I will entertain at this point any uh, requests for people to enter the uh, the speaking queue. So if you look over in your portal, you'll see a request to speak button. Um, and so if anyone wishes to ask questions about what it means to proceed or not, uh, uh, feel free to ask your questions now by requesting to speak. All right, well, well seeing no questions, uh, let's proceed to voting. And if anyone needs any technical support in voting, you can click the help button in the left-hand side of your town meeting portal uh, to access the support request form um, or access the, the help desk numbers. Uh, and if you're having trouble voting through the portal, you can enter your vote into the Q&A or call the town clerk um, at 781-316-3071. And I believe you'll see that appear in uh, either in the chat or the, yeah, I guess you'll, you'll see that in the chat. Um, and so if you refresh your portal, if it hasn't refreshed for you, uh, you'll have an option to choose your vote, one for yes, two for no. Um, there's also an abstain. I recommend you don't use that. It's not particularly useful. Um, and so if you want to proceed with uh, us meeting remotely uh, with the virtual town meeting platform that we're using for the remainder of town meeting, uh, uh, you'll press uh, one for yes. If you don't want to proceed virtually and you want to trigger a process that will have us rethink how to meet not virtually, um, uh, then you'd press two for no. And let's see. And see, do we have a timer on the voting that we can see? Uh, Julie, on your display, I don't see a, you, do you know if, why there's not a timer? I thought there was usually a timer at the top. Of... It was, so the minute has passed. Oh, okay, got it. I'm sorry, I was having some, I don't know if other people were experiencing a couple of connection issues. So there was um, a minute or two where it was going down, but it looks like we're okay now. Okay, I'll leave it open for another 30 seconds just to make sure folks are able to get their vote in. Um, This is uh, Julie Brazil, town clerk. I just submitted a couple of verbal votes, so yes. Great, thank you. Do, you. do you know if any other, I mean, I guess you won't know if there's any on their way, but. Um... 231 people have voted. Just another 10 seconds. Um... I'm entering another vote. Okay. Let's just wait a little bit longer then if votes are still coming in.
Yeah, I'm saying 233 votes cast. Is that right? Yeah, Two, 235. Okay, let's just go another five seconds and we'll close this up. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's close voting now. I'm still taking votes. Oh, okay. Oh. Let's see, the motion passes with 88.8% uh, of the vote, 207 in the affirmative, uh, 26 in the negative. Okay. Okay, and we'll just, we'll cycle through the precincts here. Okay, um, and if if anyone missed in the cycling through the precincts, if they, if anyone missed uh, their precinct and didn't see whether their vote registered, you can always check in the portal. Uh, the on the left hand side, uh, there is a view votes button, and so you can and that'll be updated real time as the the voting is closed um, on any given article. Um, so. Okay, so let's. Now move along to, um, well, I now recognize the chair of the select board, uh, Leonard Diggins. Mr. Diggins, are you there? Len, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It it is requested that members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent of the schools and staff, committees, commissions and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and superintendent, members of the electronic voting committee and staff, members of the general court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have, retain, have been retained to work for the town relative to the articles to be acted on by this meeting and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the select board and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? Madam Clerk, are you there? I, uh, yes, sorry, I lost Zoom, but uh, yes, I declare uh, and certify. Thank you. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting has as set forth in the warrant and for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when, at the, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, April 27, 2022 at 8 p.m. Great, thank you. Uh, I will now call for uh, any announcements or resolutions. I don't know if we established how to do that in the portal. Um, I don't know if that was covered uh, in the training or rehearsal sessions, but um, uh, basically, it, Early on each night, there'll be an opportunity for announcements and resolutions. So um, uh, given the impossibility that we're going to cover all 77 articles tonight, there will be plenty of opportunities for folks to offer announcements and resolutions uh, at uh, future meetings of this town meeting. Uh, so let's see. Uh, seeing no announcements or resolutions, uh, let's go to Article 2. The State of the town address by the chair of the select board, Mr. Diggins, again. Sure. You know, I mean, just um, be, I guess a little bit of a point of order ish thingy. You sure. know, I saw um, Ms. Wayman raise her hand. Is, is there an issue? 
I'm sorry. I was just going to offer if you wanted to turn on the raised hand for people to um, make the answer. Oh. Oh yeah, that, 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 that's a good idea. Let, let, let's do that now, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Diggins. Let's uh, uh, let's open up raise uh, the ability for members to raise hands if they have any uh, announcements or resolutions they'd like to share with the meeting right now. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so it appears that we, at least I'm not seeing any raised hands, at least I think I'm looking in the right place. Um, can anyone else on the panel confirm that there are no raised hands? I'm not seeing any. Okay, well, seeing none, let's uh, uh, move back again to Article 2, uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And it is with joy and eager anticipation that I say um, thank you again. And I have a lot to say, so my tempo is going to be a little quick. You know, first I I give thanks and pay my respects to the to our fellow resident residents and especially those who volunteer their time by serving on our nearly 100 boards, committees, commissions, and and task groups. Next, I acknowledge all of my fellow town meeting members upon whom our former government rests. I'm especially proud of you and the efforts leading up to this town meeting, but more on that later. To my fellow town-wide elected officials, it is impossible to work with you or observe you in action and see the results of your labors without having a profound appreciation for all that you do. When it comes to our state delegates, Senator Cindy Friedman, Representative Sean Garbley and Representative Dave Rogers, I can only imagine the greater demands on you and your families. Finally, and most importantly, there is our town staff. They are truly an amazing and wonderful bunch of people led by our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, Chief Julie Flaherty of the police department and Chief Kevin Kelly of the fire department. They keep our town running as well as keep us safe and protected on a daily basis. So after all of that, is it any surprise that when I think of the state of our town, I am filled with immense pride and aberration. I'm not the type to claim that we are number one or the best or the greatest. In my humble opinion, those judgments are best made by others. That said, Arlington is recognized as a leader by the examples that we set. Case in point, during this roller coaster of a pandemic, our Board of Health, led by Christine Bourne-Journo, has served us well and by example has led the region and the Commonwealth towards the goal of keeping residents informed and providing us, especially our elderly and our youth, with easily accessible vaccines once they were approved. So let's spend a couple of minutes recalling more of the last 12 months. Arlington celebrated its first Juneteenth Day. Juneteenth Day. It was the beginning of a new tradition and in a sense it complements a much older tradition of celebrating Patriots Day with the, recreation, with the recreation of the rise of Paul Revere and William Dawes. We also welcome our new superintendent, Dr. Liz Holman, who has already launched an ambitious strategic planning and vision process for our schools. About two months ago, the first wing of the new Arlington High School opened. It's an elegant space and it shows our, delicate, our dedication to our youth and that we value giving out the children of our community a good education. Our town clerk, Julie Blazell, our DEI director, Jillian Harvey, and Kelly Linema of the planning department guided us through the re-precincting process with the goal of helping us to make it more possible for town meeting to become a body that more closely reflects and represents the makeup of our community. Now, even with the challenges posed by the re-precincting process, for the first time, I'm very pleased to say that all 21 precincts either work individually or combine with other precincts to conduct spring precinct meetings. And that's despite having less time to organize. And I might add that other than sending out a notice and helping with Zoom accounts here and there, all, and I mean, all the organizing was done by the town meeting members. And I hope that the effort was worth it. And I hope that it provides more evidence of the benefits of connecting with each other and listening to each other. Last year, late last year, 
the Housing Corporation of Arlington cut the ribbon on its Downing Square and Broadway initiative, which offers 48 units of affordable housing for low to middle income residents. Combine this news with the seating of the board of our affordable housing trust fund, and it shows that we are moving forward towards our goal of making Arlington more affordable for more people. We wrapped up the development of a sustainable transportation plan known as Connect Arlington, along with the development of a fair housing action plan, a net zero action plan, and the next iteration of the housing production plan. Of course, any recounting of last year must acknowledge the contributions of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. Two products, projects that come to mind are one, the time traveling climate crisis messages from students in the future, and two, neighborhood haikus, which sparked my poetic creativity and apparently that of many others here in town. And I have to say, I feel a haiku coming on. Must turn, future look, opportunities abound. Try till we succeed. So with that, we look ahead. In three days, our new community center, formerly known as the Senior Center opens. Since I'm anticipating that it will be my favorite hangout spot in 10 to 15 years, I'm excited about it. This complements the continued rebuilding of our high school and shows our commitments to our senior population as well as our youth. In the category of challenges, we have begun the process of searching for a new town manager. No one will replace Mr. Chapdelaine, who in his 10 years as town manager and nearly two years as a deputy town manager before that has helped Arlington not only become a better place for its residents, but it's also made Arlington a leader in the region. You have our deepest gratitude, Adam, and we wish you and your family well. A challenge of a different sort will be pulling off our annual town party known as Town Day. If the pandemic and the weather doesn't conspire against us, your select board, along with the guidance of our office staff and a contingent of volunteers, and that includes some of you, though you don't know it yet, will host Town Day on September 17th. We know that many residents look forward to Town Day and putting smiles on those residents' faces will be worth the effort. Now, what doesn't put a smile on anyone's face is the compound word override. Probably most residents see it as two four-letter words. Indeed it is. But let us also try to approach this inevitability with a notion of it being an opportunity for our community to reassess our values and to act accordingly. Perhaps when we conclude that the earlier and the greater the amount that we invest in our future, the greater the payoff we will see and the less it will cost us in the long run. Perhaps we may conclude that we need to hunker down and, and deeply cut spending. As we have our community conversation, let us do so in good faith and respect the thoughts and feelings of others, especially those with whom we disagree. So again, and in closing, when I think about the state of our town, I am filled with a sense of pride and admiration because the state of our town is good and it continues to improve. As I work with and get to know more people in our town, I am increasingly confident that we have a great future ahead of us. And it is our fervent hope that our affection for our town and for each other will also grow and motivate us to contribute more to its success and well being. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, so it's been brought to my attention that there are actually two things I've done out of order. And so we're, we're going to. Uh, uh, skip back uh, to do this properly. Um, when Mr. Dickens uh, requested that members of the select board and elected officials of the town um, and then enumerated a, a set of individuals uh, to allow them to, um, uh, let's see, uh, to sit within the town meeting enclosure, this virtual enclosure that we have, uh, I do need a second on that. And actually, uh, Julie, can you clear the uh, the seconds that we have, just to make sure that we're we're getting seconds for this motion. Are these new seconds or are these lingering from before? I'm seeing four in there now. Okay, well, I'm seeing I'm a bunch of. Sure. I was about to clear them. Okay, well, I see new names in there, so it's clear that there there were additional seconds that were, that were just added. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, so we have a second. And, uh, and for this, uh, because it's uh, 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 a, a pretty kind of predictable, basic formulaic thing, uh, we're not gonna go through uh, uh, having like a full 
uh, vote for this? Uh, uh, do we have any, can we uh, enable the raise hands feature in Zoom to allow anyone to object to all of these individuals being allowed in the town meeting enclosure? And I'll just repeat it now since, uh, 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 since I missed this earlier. Uh, as requested, this is this was moved by Mr. Diggins to request that members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town, and staff, superintendents, and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Minutemen Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted upon by the meeting and representatives of the news media to be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. Um, and so that's been said. Do we have any, now that uh, raising hands is enabled in Zoom, uh, do we have any objections to allowing those folks in the enclosure? Okay, so we have one objection by uh, Susan Weber. Um, or has that been cleared now? Okay, it appears that we have no objections. Um, and we might as well leave raise hands open because we need to do this again for another second that, uh, that I missed. And apologies for that. Um, and this was Mr. Diggins' motion that if uh, he moved that if all business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at the session, when the meeting adjourns, uh, it adjourns to Wednesday, April 27, 2022 at 8 p.m. So do, can you clear the seconds? So we can get a second on that. And apologies to everyone for missing this earlier. Okay, we have new seconds. And uh, if we still have raised hands enabled in Zoom, um, do we have any uh, any objections? If anyone has an objection to an unanimous vote, um, you can raise your hand now in Zoom for adjourning until 8 p.m. this Wednesday when this meeting ends tonight. Okay, seeing no raised hands and therefore no objections, uh, the vote is unanimous. I declare it. And let's see. And so now we are back to uh, let's take up Article Three reports of committees. Okay, uh, call for all reports that are ready to be received. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Fosca, did you have anything to add to this or shall we just head straight into a vote? Uh, I would move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, Select Board, Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before the meeting without further motion. Second. Okay. And let's and see. And I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. Okay. Second. Okay. And do we have any objections? Is, is the raise hand feature enabled right now? Okay, so if anyone has any objections to uh, receiving all the reports and uh, laying Article 3 upon the table, you can raise your hand now. Seeing no objections, um, all the uh, reports are received. Let's see. And now we take up Article 4, uh, the appointment of the measure of wood and bark. Okay, so do we have any uh, do we have any nominations for the 
measure of wood and bark. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Foskett. Uh, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10. I um, move that um, Mr. John Warden be appointed measure of wood and bark. Okay. Second. Second, okay, very good. And um, do we have any objections uh, through use of raised hands in Zoom? Okay, so seeing none, it is a unanimous vote. And Mr. Warden is, again, the uh, measurer of wood and bark. Thank you. Uh, any new members who have questions about that, I'll happily take those questions uh, offline. Thank you. Um, let's see. And okay, so now let's. Take up Article Five, the election of the Assistant Town Moderator. Let's see, we have a uh, point of order. Let's actually take that now, uh, Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Go ahead. Thank you, Carl Wagner, Precinct Fifteen. I'm surprised that we're doing election Soviet style without votes, even though obviously the measure of wooden bark is, is a ceremonial uh, vote. Can you explain again why? I'm sorry if I missed that. Oh, I mean, in this particular case, uh, there was only um, uh, there, were, there was one, only one candidate that was appointed. And so um, using my discretion, I figured it wasn't worth the meeting's time to have a, a, a full uh, vote consuming a couple of minutes of time um, to determine the winner when we could just do a, uh, you know, just, just do a call for uh, objections. Uh, with the uh, assistant town moderator, if there are more than one candidate, for instance, then, um, then we can put that to a vote and we'd actually have to vote on that, so. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Yep, of course. Um, okay, so, so I'd like to uh, open the floor for any, um, uh, once we get the article open, uh, we can open the speaking queue for uh, any uh, nominations for assistant town moderator. So let's use the speaking queue for uh, nominations. And um, if you have like, any a nomination and an endorsement that you'd like to share, uh, feel free to use the speaking queue uh, to click on the request to speak button in the portal to do so. And to start things off, we have uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, let's uh, let's. Let's uh, give him an opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12. I nominate Adam Alster. Okay. And I believe the assistant town moderator uh, does need to be a town meeting member. Um, and I believe Mr. Oster is a town meeting member. So uh, um, let's say, do we have a second. We have several seconds. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Oster is our, our our first candidate for uh, assistant town moderator. Um, anything else, Mr. Helmuth? Hearing nothing. Um, do we have any other uh, nominations that anyone would like to offer? Uh, which you can do so by requesting to speak in your town meeting portal. Okay, I was seeing none since we only have uh, one candidate again. So uh, I'll also uh, defer to the uh, raised hand uh, uh, in the in Zoom to uh, register any objections. So feel free to object. And then we can, uh, if there are any objections, I'll, I'll call for a, a, a full vote of the committee, or of, the, of, of the meeting. Yeah. Let's see, do we have uh, raised hands opened in Zoom right now?
Okay, well, seeing none, um, uh, Mr. Oster, congratulations on um, your re-election as assistant town moderator. So let's move on now. To, before we get to the other articles, um, there's a couple of things that we're gonna do first. Uh, first, we're going to present uh, some administrative corrections that were identified kind of late breaking just in the last day or so. Uh, so we want to make sure that all town meeting members have the opportunity to uh, mark up your pages or take notes um, on these corrections, which um, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, can, can you speak to whether these corrections are, are already uh, posted on the annotated warrant online, or, or is that still uh, in progress? Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, all of these corrections are uh, shown in uh, shown in Nova's agenda. So if you're looking at Nova's agenda, you are seeing the correct version. The printed things are the only ones right. that are wrong. Okay, thank you. So anyone who has their printed material at home uh, or just wants to take notes, otherwise, uh, I mean, if you if you're strict if you're strictly following through the annotated warrant online, then as, um, as Ms. Brazil mentioned, like that's already been updated. But if you're working from the uh, paper binder, which I have a copy of somewhere here, um, then you might wanna take note of these corrections. So uh, Julie, our, the other Julie, our display controller, can, uh, can you slowly scroll through this so folks uh, can uh, make note of these changes that, um, that might not be reflected in their printed copies if they have them. Yes, and also Mr. Moderator, um, Town Council Doug Heim is raising his hand. Oh, um, uh, Mr. Heim, uh, go ahead. Yes, you. Good evening, members of Town Meeting, Doug Heim, Town Council. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I just wanna walk through these quickly so they're uh, as straightforward as they can be. Um, the first uh, administrative correction you'll see, you actually got a handout on this um, uh, earlier last week. It uh, essentially uh, is, is not so much an error in the actual vote that was approved by the select board or a typo. It's uh, sections of Article 12 that were uh, inadvertently cut off in the select board report that basically went to print. These are essentially sections five, six, seven. They provide for exemptions uh, to the uh, water bottle um, uh, pro prohibition under emergencies, an effective date, and a severability clause. The second um, uh, fix, if you will, uh, Article 16, on page 32, there should be redundant subparagraph uh, that should be eliminated. Um, you'll basically see that there's subparagraphs A, B, C, D, and then it goes a restatement of another A that A should be stricken. So you should see it go from A, B, C, D uh, to E. Um, a uh, keen of sight town meeting member also <laughs> spotted a different um, uh, error under Article 16 that I'll just read aloud right now. On page 32, subsection D, resident users phase out. It should read as of March 15th, 2025 not as of March 15th, 2026, all use of gas power leaf blowers by residents shall be corrected. So again, uh, the town clerk was uh, generous enough to update these um, votes in the annotated town warrant online, but if you're keeping track by paper, on page 32, in addition to uh, the uh, portion that gets stricken, uh, that unnecessary secondary A, it should also read um, under section D, right preceding it immediately as of March 15th, 2025, not March 15th, 2026. Uh, Article 18 also has a small number of um, what are essentially typos. The word victualler, uh, for those of you who know what a common victualler license is, was spelled incorrectly. The word recommend should have been recommended. That's on page 37. And then finally, um, I'm sorry, uh, and then the last two are there's a uh, auto numbering uh, fiasco where subsection C uh, should be sub I'm sorry, subparagraph C should be a subparagraph E. It's fairly obvious to anybody looking at the document that it's just uh, uh, misnumbered, but that C should read E. And then finally, um, there were um, 
uh, some confusion about what the amount of the fine was that the select board approved. It should be $100 across the board. It should not be $50 for the first offense. This is on page 38, section six, fees and penalties for non-compliance with the um, rodenticide uh, article that is gonna be discussed later. Uh, there's also a minor correction, uh, section six severability should be section seven. I apologize for these, uh, these typos and a couple of different uh, renumberings that, uh, that unfortunately got a little bit mixed up during um, some iterations of these uh, votes. But again, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to go over them. But all of them, except for the uh, one that I noted about the date, have been uh, listed uh, in this document. And the town clerk has been kind enough to make sure that they're correct um, with respect to all of these administrative changes on the annotated town board. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, members of town. Great. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Um, let's see. Um, I get just um brief I, I don't want to take too much time doing this but if anyone i, I do want to take at least uh, uh, a couple of minutes uh give an opportunity for folks who have any questions about those corrections uh, uh a chance to speak um so feel free to use the uh, request to speak uh, button well i guess this is under well do we need to change the uh because we're currently still in article five which was the last article we had um Or is it easier if we just allow people to raise hands? Because since we're, we don't actually have an article before us, um, so the, the portal's not really synchronized to, to where we're at. But we, we, we could, I guess we, we could still use the request to speak button. If, any, if anyone wants, uh, has any questions that they'd like to ask about these corrections. Uh, Mr. Jameson. Actually, before, uh, okay, why don't, why don't we take Mr. Jameson and then we can uh, take the uh, the point of order. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. While we're doing corrections, I just want to uh, reiterate the, the message that you sent earlier that I made a, a huge error in my um, uh, annotated consent agenda on Article 18. And that's been changed from encourage the use of rotocides to phase out uh, the roadsides, and I apologize to Ms. Crowder and uh, her associates who worked so hard on getting that article placed before us. Uh, my sincere apologies. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Great. Great. Uh, yeah, and th thanks for having that that summary of the uh, consent agenda, and thanks for making that correction uh, that uh, Ms. Crowder noticed. Um, and apologies that I didn't catch that either. Um, thank you, Mr. Jamison. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Mazina's point of order. Um, yeah. Hello, Mr. Uh, moderator. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, name and precinct, please. Yes. Angel Mozina, precinct 15. Just wanted to confirm, uh, first we're discussing Article four, 5 or Article 6. The screen, I think, is still um, referring back to the assistant town moderator election. Yeah, that's right. So th that's just... Um, uh, uh, an oddity of the fact that what we're discussing right now is not actually listed in uh, our list of articles. Um, and so to save us time, from we, we could create an article just for talking about the administrative corrections, but this was a, a late addition to our agenda. Uh, and so it was just easier to uh, use the request to speak button in the context of Article 5, which was the, the last article uh, that we were uh, discussing. And so uh, Article Five is already done with. Yes. Uh, we're just we're just reusing it here to allow folks an opportunity to speak. So I apologize for the confusion in the in the user interface about that, which is inconsistent. No, I appreciate I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Moderator. Just a follow up question then on sure. articles that will come up later on if they had administrative corrections. Uh, if there have been any amendments proposed by um, town meeting members, although I understand that cannot be the forum to do it uh, this way here. Uh, but if there are, uh, if there have been amendments proposed, will we know about them? Will we see them or not? Right. So amendments, I believe that we, um, someone correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we're sending those out 
uh, through the town meeting member email list. And so anyone, so, so all town meeting members um, hopefully are subscribed to that list already and they should be receiving updates about uh, amendments. Uh, there's various amendments that are in uh, some that have been kind of approved uh, and are listed on uh, the online um, uh, annotated warrants. Others are, st are still kind of pending where I'm you know, consulting with town council or uh, I'm still in the midst of making a decision about whether it's in scope. And so some of those are still in process. Um, and so those should go when those do when the when if or when they those get finalized, those will be announced through the town meeting member email list, and the, they'll be also attached to the kind of related material uh, in Nova's agenda uh, for an article um, within the uh, the online annotated warrant as well. So we'll be announcing it and also posting it to the annotated warrant. Um, thank you for clarifying. Great, thank you. Um, Okay, so let's clear Ms. Mazina's point of order. And that's all we have with the administrative corrections. There's, I mean, I'm just accepting these corrections administratively, so there's nothing for us to move or vote on. Uh, so let's move on now to the consent agenda. And as uh, uh, Julie W., our uh, Display controller is bringing that up. Uh, I'll, I'll just summarize what the consent agenda is. I sent out some communications ahead of time about this, so hopefully it doesn't come as any surprise. Uh, the consent agenda is just a way of kind of batching up articles, uh, which um, through consultation with you know, uh, uh, you know committee chairs and other folks and town council, um, I've decided are not particularly controversial and probably don't warrant any discussion. Um, but uh, and so, so it allows us to kind of skip debate on a large swath of uh, of articles. Um, that doesn't mean that they're unimportant. It just means that there's unlikely, in my estimation, to be any real debate on it. And so uh, we have an opportunity now for town meeting members to hold, I, which means like to remove, to request to remove articles from the consent agenda. Um, so we have a point of order from Mr. Leone. Well, Mr. Moderator, John Leone, Precinct A. Hi, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Quite all right. Old uh, habits. Yeah. I'm going to um, request that you do not use the procedure of having two people remove an item from the consent agenda. Mm. When I initiated the consent agenda several years ago, it was upon the belief that if one town meeting member wished to discuss an item or an article, or had a question about the article that it, it would be freely available to remove that article by simply putting a hold on it. Mm -hmm. By requiring a second town meeting member to vote to remove it from the consent agenda, you're essentially removing the right of that other town meeting member to ask their questions or perhaps to change people's mind about an article which they feel passionately about. So I'm gonna, um, as the moderator who um, introduced the consent agenda and knowing how the consent agenda is handled in other communities throughout the Commonwealth, I'm gonna ask that you reconsider that point of order. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Um, and, uh, and that was an ex excellent example of a textbook case or usage of point of order. So thank you, Mr. Leone. Um, so, where I stand on it, and I, I take your point, and I appreciate it. Uh, where I stand on this is that uh, consent agendas uh, uh, throughout the Commonwealth follow a broad range of um, thresholds for holding uh, articles from the consent agenda, so that they're debated and voted upon uh, individually, as opposed to part of the batch, the batch of articles in the consent agenda, and in some cases. Uh, a majority vote is used to remove it from the consent agenda, which I feel is um, onerously high. Um, I've talked to some folks about like, uh, uh, there was a suggestion that's, that, that someone offered of like, well, maybe five votes because uh, five people standing when we're meeting in person before we had electronic clickers would be the threshold for doing uh, uh, 
uh, a standing vote. Um, and, uh, and so I kind of weighed these different options. What I settled on was, well, a, a single vote to, to hold from the consent agenda felt like it was too low to me and uh, a threshold of a majority vote of town meeting seemed just really too high. And so I settled on two was like the next increment that we could do. Uh, so uh, so I, I'm happy to, uh, uh, to stick with uh, the two votes, which effectively would be like a, a request to hold the, or a request to remove the article from the consent agenda, and then a second vote to kind of confirm that. Um, and I feel like if we're not getting a second vote, then there's really not a whole lot to speak to. And folks can feel free to like, even if, uh, if they don't personally care to remove it from the consent agenda, but feel that someone else should have a right to, they can second that as a confirmation. Um, so people can use their, their, their kind of second, their virtual seconding um, in whatever manner they, 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 they see fit. So, uh, so I'm, I'm comfortable, I, I appreciate the point um, and, uh, and, and the context uh, that Mr. Leone has provided and uh, I'm uh, comfortable uh, moving forward with uh, a threshold of, of two votes, which is still a, a very, very low bar in, in, in the big picture. Uh, so um, let's see. Um, so we have, uh, so why don't we go through here, the, uh, we're, the way that we're gonna do this is different from how we did it in the dress rehearsal last night. Uh, the, the approach that we tried last night was uh, kind of uh, riddled with problems. And so uh, we actually got a software change uh, thanks to some quick work uh, by the developer of the virtual town meeting portal uh, to allow us to do this uh, in hopefully a more uh, clear way than, than, we, than we did last night. That said, this is the first time this is actually being tried. Um, uh, other, other than us kind of testing this uh, on a small scale ahead of the meeting. Uh, so I ask for everyone's forbearance uh, and like if, if things don't go perfectly smoothly, but uh, my, my belief is that this will go better than it did in the rehearsal due to these software changes that we're gonna try out now. So uh, I ask for everyone's patience and forbearance as we uh, uh, work through this, um, the, the, this new way of doing the consent agenda. Okay, so, um, uh, Julie W., uh, can you give like a brief, you did most of like the kind of training and the practice of this. Do you mind giving like a brief overview of, of how this is going to work? Because I think you, you understand the details of this better than I do at this point. Sure, but as you said, we put this together today. So yeah. um, basically we're going to be pulling up each of the articles that were on uh, the majority consent agenda and then the two thirds consent agenda. Um, and it just gives us a, an opportunity for people to be able to um, note if they want to take off any of each of the articles that are on either of these agendas. And um, it also will show the people, I know people had concerns about wanting to know who was pulling these articles off. So um, you'll be able to see each of the people for each of the articles. So um, we we're starting right at the top with article six um and we'll we'll take it from there any any more information needed I, I think that's pretty clear so and it, it'll probably become more obvious as we actually get into the procedure so um so we're now opening we're kind of starting i think when when, when we click the button here we'll start the timer um and i'll give um uh i'll give 30 seconds i, I think that should be plenty and we, we can adjust that if that if, if that's yeah, not working for folks. We'll, we'll try a 30 second timer on um, anyone who wishes to remove this article from the consent agenda um, uh, can click the uh, remove from consent agenda button uh, in their portal window. Uh, and we'll see those names coming up as we do it. And so um, I will also pull up my copy of the consent agenda where um, I don't know if it's the, uh, I'll read the titles as well. Um, so folks know what we're, we're voting on. So why don't we go ahead and start that timer. So if you want to hold article six, meaning you wanna remove it from the consent agenda so that it can be uh, debated and voted on individually rather than as part of this batch, which will not allow any debate for any articles that remain in the batch, right? We're now 15 seconds in um, and 
and this is so art, this is article six we're talking about um uh bylaw amendment for updating the human rights commission bylaw if you want to have debate on that okay so we have one if we get a second vote and so let's close voting now we only got one um so that will not be held And so now we'll work to uh, move to Article 9. And so let's uh, start the timer again. And so actually, let's pause the timer. We have a point of order from Dr. Ward. Uh, so name and precinct, please, once you get onto the panel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so Ms. Warden, do you have, if you have two computers side by side, can you, that are both dialed into the meeting, uh, can you mute the computer that you're not speaking into? Yes. Turn, or turn, turn the speakers off or turn the volume off on the other computer. Uh, 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 yeah. Dr. Warden, are you there? Actually, I see she's, uh, uh, her computer is muted now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you yes, hear me? I hear you now, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Mr. Moderator, can you hear me? Yes. Can can you hear me? Oh, I'm, no, I'm muted. I'm unmuted. Mr. Moderator, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, Dr. Warden. Um, Jesus. Um, is it she? She may have muted. Can those. you hear me, Mr. Moderator? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um. Well, so can we? Uh, since can you hear me, Mr. Moderator? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Well, yes. um, I want to ask where the button is to make a second to to make to vote to second any um, removal from the consent agenda. I don't see any button to that's right. remove. Yes. Um, that, that, that's right. So to place simple. a second on that right, vote. So Right, so let me explain. So there's uh, it's um, th there's a remove from consent agenda button, and it's 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 not presented as a second in the portal. Uh, it's just if there whoever wants to remove an article from the consent agenda can click the remove con from consent agenda button. And if there are at least two people who've requested a removal for a given article, then it will be removed. Um, and if we don't get to, if there's zero or one request to remove it within the allotted time, then it. it'll remain on the consent agenda. So there, there's technically no second, it's just a threshold of two votes. Uh, and, you know, uh, I would like to say that I don't think that really is appropriate since the second is quite different from the original vote. I would like to be able to place seconds to any particular um, item. I really miss that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, well, the the uh, move from right? consent agenda button can be used you similar, that, to a second in this context. We just, the software doesn't have the feature of switching automatically to a seconding button. Uh, so this is the best we could do given the limitations of the software. Uh, was there anything else that you had, Dr. Warden? No, thank you. But I find that extremely disappointing because I, I don't want to answer questions about the particular item that I want to second. I think that should be the primary person who, who voted to remove it from the consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, okay, so something I can clarify there, if I understand your, your, your question is, um, I will consider, and I should have clarified this earlier, I apologize, that uh, later when the when the article comes up 
um, like if an article is removed from the consent agenda, because there's at least two votes to remove it, then when that article comes up, uh, by default, I will call on the first person who registered their request to remove it from the consent agenda when that article comes up in the natural uh, order of articles. Um, and in particular, in the case of a uh, an article that has a recommended vote of no action, um, there's really nothing to discuss on that. Uh, and so the, the only uh, legitimate in scope uh, action that someone can take after they've removed it from the consent agenda is to offer a substitute motion. So if you're the first person who uh, who votes in to remove something from the consent agenda, I'll by default I'll consider that person the person who's um, going to be responsible for yeah. presenting a the only should substitute motion, motion on a on an article that has a recommended vote of no action uh, for other articles that have a recommended vote of a favorable action, um, then we'll just, when that article comes up later on after having been removed from the consent agenda, we'll just go into debate about that. And so that's a slightly different situation because debate is perfectly, or you know, uh, uh, there's plenty of debate that can be in scope for a favorable action article, which is not the case for a no action article. Um, so I asked that folks be, uh, uh, mindful that if they're removing a, a, an article from the consent agenda and it's an article that has a recommended vote of no action, you really need to be prepared uh, for a substitute, uh, to offer a substitute motion for it so that there's some action for us to take and, and, and to debate about. Um, was, um, I, believe Ms., uh, I believe Dr. Warden is, uh, is done with her um, point of order. Uh, so let's take uh, uh, Ms. Babiars. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. This is Joe Babiars, Precinct 15, and I think you've answered my question. This is my first town meeting. Apologies if I don't catch on to things, but is no action different than a down vote, a failure yeah. to pass vote? And um, with that, I will just sign off and await your response. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Uh, that be ours. Uh, no action, uh, articles that have a recommended vote of no action are very unintuitive. Uh, I'll try to uh, explain briefly, uh, and we can get into this further uh, offline, but um, a recommended vote of no action is, means that there's nothing to do with it. Like we have nothing to do um, uh, to satisfy this article, but we do, we do still have to vote on it as we do have to vote on all articles. And the, Cons the, the innovation of the consent agenda is that uh, among the kind of non-controversial, again, it's a sub subjective determination, but among the non-controversial articles, uh, the no action articles are ones that there's really nothing to do for them other than to vote on them. And whether they're voted up or voted down, um, it kind of doesn't matter. We just have to vote on them. Uh, it's just a weird kind of legal oddity that we need to satisfy as part of our responsibilities at town meeting. Um, and so uh, when, when we're discussing and uh, if an article that's a recommended vote of no action is removed from the consent agenda and it comes up later on in its natural kind of sequence, sequential order of articles, um, there's nothing that anyone can say uh, like, like from the speaker queue that would be in scope for it because there's nothing to do. Um, uh, but the one, one action that can be taken is for someone to offer a, uh, uh, a substitute motion so that there is some action to take relative to that article. Um, so voting a no action article up or down kind of doesn't matter. Uh, it just needs to be voted upon. Um, and uh, it requires a substitute motion to turn it into a, a, an article that has some actual uh, uh, action to be taken as a result. Which again, it's, it's very unintuitive, um, and we're kind of stuck with that. You know, the, you know, the the legal requirements of what time meeting has to do relative to all articles, regardless of whether they have a um, a favorable action that actually does something or a no action that does nothing. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, going forward, though, uh, let let's um, we shouldn't be using the point of order for uh, for 
questions unless it's something that folks feel uh, that if it isn't addressed has the uh, the chance of kind of derailing the meeting procedurally, right? So if it's just about um, questions that can be taken up at another time, uh, then that really shouldn't be using the point of order. Um, so I'll, I'll try to be somewhat strict about that going forward. Okay, so we have another point of order, Mr. Jalka, can we bring him on? I think I just unmuted my, myself. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Daniel Jalka, Precinct 6. I think this rises to the uh, standard of point of order only because uh, I think it will help to facilitate the perception that this is a fair and, and proper process, especially in light of the new standard you introduced to have two people um, requesting to pull something. Um, I think it would be useful if it's not already on your mind that if the first request comes close to the end of the 30 second limit that you give a few extra seconds for a second request to come in especially in light of the fact that you suggested people who are um, sympathetic with the idea that anybody who wants to remove an item from the uh, consent agenda um, that they could just chime in and, and, and support that idea in in sort of you know the the, the theory of that idea uh, I, I might have missed. I might have misperceived it, but I kind of got the impression on the first issue that that um, the 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 first request to pull it came in very close to the thirty seconds, and then it was over. So just a bit of feedback in case it helps to um, it both make the uh, the process more fair and to make it appear to be more fair. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think going forward, what we can do is have maybe 20 seconds for the first vote to be read, the first request to be registered. And then if whenever one comes in, uh, like that comes in at five seconds or comes in at 19 seconds, whenever it comes in, um, we I, I can then be looking at my watch for like another 20 seconds for, for the second. So, so maybe, maybe that'll give the uh, appearance of more fairness. There's always the issue of uh, a vote could come in like a second after uh, some time threshold, and that's always going to be awkward and um, a challenge. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do going forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jalkett. Uh, Mr. Uh, Weinstein has a point of order. Uh, <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Jordan Weinstein, Precinct 21. Um, I have a maybe a simpler way to do this. I would suggest, uh, given the variability of uh, your description and lead-in, to each of these uh, warrant articles from the consent agenda that you simply uh, start your 30 second voting clock after you finish introducing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could do that. I mean, I think, um, because everyone can see, yeah, some of these names are quite a bit longer than others. So yeah, I, I, I'll entertain that, uh, that approach. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else, Mr. Weinstein? No, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, and Mr. Warden has a point of order. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, no, I've got a the, the reason reason we're having all this feedback when Dr. Warden uh, tries to speak is that my headphones, my my voices, your voices, everybody's voices come through my computer, not through my headphones, and the headphones are plugged in. Is there some <laughs> way you can activate the headphones from your end? Because we the, all that squawking noise is, is not very pleasant for anybody, but I don't know what to do about it. It didn't never happen last year, right? So that, that's not, I, I don't believe that's something that we can remotely enable. Um, but uh, perhaps we can get someone from tech support uh, on the phone with you to try to work through that um, from your end. Is that is that a possibility? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I. I Again, it, it ma makes it hard to participate if, if you're jumping back and forth and turning off the volume and so on. It's um, another downside of the virtual meeting, you might say. But yeah, if somebody wants to call me, yeah, go ahead. I, I'd be glad to. I'm glad to get any help I can get. Okay, great. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see if we can. Um, uh, let's see. Can someone, like I see in the Zoom panel, kind of give me some indication that uh, we have someone who can follow up with Mr. Warden? Okay, we, we can, we'll have someone contact you. 
Anything else, Mr. Borden? Um, okay, I, th I think. Uh, Mr. Warden, do you have do you have anything further? Uh, no, no, no. It's just uh, you know I I I'd like to be able to fully participate, and it's hard to do when I when when both bo both of us can't hear at the same time. Right. And so I'll tell you what we'll we'll do. We'll I mean we're already at the nine thirty mark, and following um, kind of past practice, uh, why don't I'll take the next point of order that we have uh, from Mr. Ha uh, Ms. Hyam, and we. Um, We'll take a recess after that for uh, uh, for ten minutes, and hopefully that'll give some time for uh, um, for any any issues to be resolved and for folks to take a break at the halfway point of the meeting tonight. Okay, I will uh, wait. Uh, wait the call. Great, thank you. Um, okay, uh, let's let's take Ms. Hyam's point of order, and then we'll go into uh, a ten minute recess after that. Leba Hyam, whoops. Leba Hyam, Precinct 15. Um, you addressed my first point of order, which was um, that it was break time. But my second point of order is um, that I believe that you've proposed a good alternative given how inefficient last week's pulled agenda items were when there were no substitute motions or even speaking to put forward. And I would like to see our town body actually address the method you've proposed before we try changing it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so let's take a, uh, a 10 minute break at this point. We'll come back at, uh, at 9.45 and we'll resume from there. And the end of our uh, intermission. So let's uh, start coming back. Okay, give folks a minute to kind of get situated back in. Okay, so I believe we were on, yeah, we're on article nine of the consent agenda. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Ms. Brazil, do you, do you have, uh, do you recall if we uh, had already voted on whether to hold article nine or not? Or Ms. Wayman as well? I'd have no notes that we finished uh, with Article Nine, so okay. I, I think those two names are with associated with Article Nine. Okay, great. So uh, I don't I don't think we opened the voting yet, but I believe like those. Um, uh, yeah, so so we already have the two votes required to hold it from the consent agenda, and we'll take note of Mr. Warden. Um, and so, Mr. Warden. Um, so please be prepared to offer a substitute motion when uh, when Article Nine comes up. Um, and obviously, if Mr. Warden and Mr. Wagner want to coordinate uh, on uh, on that, feel free to do so. Any, anyone else can feel free to coordinate with Mr. Warden and Mr. Wagner uh, if they're interested as well in, in kind of drafting a substitute motion um, for this no action article. Thank you. So let's. Uh, so why don't we um, open up consideration of Article 11 on the consent agenda. And this is, and I'll, I'll make note going forward, uh, there were some comments about this, of, of whether the article has a recommended vote of favorable action or no action, since there's kind of uh, different um, uh, 
responsibilities that folks have if they're trying to hold one versus the other. Um, okay, so this is, before we start the timer, this is a bylaw amendment related to domestic partnerships. Um, so, well, we haven't even started the timer yet, uh, but we already have uh, two requests to hold it, so it'll be held. So we're done with Article 11. Well, we're, we're, we're done removing it from the consent agenda, but it'll come up later. Uh, next is Article 14. And this uh, would establish, uh, well, it's an article that would establish a committee on insurance costs and issues, but its rank recommended vote is no action. So uh, anyone seeking to hold this, uh, you'll, you will be called on to uh, um, offer a substitute motion if this is, is pulled from the consent agenda. So let's start the, the, the timer on this and we'll try, we have 20 seconds for a first re uh, request to remove it from the consent agenda. And if there is, so we have one, um, and so now we'll go to 30 seconds because that's 20 seconds from, and now we have a couple others. So, uh, so Mr. Warden, so we can pause the timer here. Um, we have Mr. Warden, Mr. Tremblay and Dr. Warden um, requesting to hold it. Uh, so we've reached the two vote threshold. And so I'll look to uh, Mr. Warden uh, to offer a substitute motion when that comes up um, in the natural order of articles. Um, okay, so let's uh let's say that was 14 let's now move on to article 18 on the consent agenda this is a favorable action article and uh, before we start the timer this is a, a bylaw amendment to phase out certain toxic rodenticides on public and private property with reporting requirement and uh, public education and this is favorable action um um, and so when we start the timer on this, we'll give 20 seconds for a first request to pull it and, uh, and, if it, and, and then we'll wait another, if there is a first, then we'll wait 20 seconds for a second. Um, um, so now five, you have five seconds left to try to pull this from the consent agenda so that it's debated and voted on separately. Okay, so time has expired and so it'll remain on the consent agenda. So now we're moving on to Article 19, uh, which is a recommended vote of no action. Um, the original scope of the article was to, uh, I believe, to rename a street to, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting this pronunciation right, someone can correct me, is it uh, Magliozzi Boulevard or Magliozzi Boulevard? Um, and again, this is, uh, so we have uh, Mr. Schlickman has, uh, and we have multiple others. So, um, so I'll look to Mr. Schlickman at the time uh, to present a substitute motion when Article 19 comes up. It, it, it's it's now hereby removed from the consent agenda. And so, when it comes up in the natural order order of articles, uh, I'll look for a uh, a substitute motion. Thank you. Uh, so now we're going to Article 20. Um, the description of this is code enforcement, which is not very descriptive, so I'll pull up a little bit more detail before we get started. Uh, actually, that does not come up in the uh, in the interactive warrant or the the, the annotated warrant for some reason. Um, All right, but in any event, we have uh, two votes to remove it from the consent agenda uh, before we've even started the timer. So it's reached the threshold and it'll be removed. And so this is a no action article. So I'll be looking to Mr. Schlickman for um, uh, a substitute motion when that article comes up. Article 21 is next. This is also a no action article. Uh, the original scope of the article was extension of the Youth and Young Adult Advisory Board Commission or Committee Study Group. Uh, and my understanding is that it's no action because that extension of time was not necessary. Um, so there's there's nothing to do here um, currently. And so, so when we start the timer on this and I give folks 20 seconds to request to remove it from the consent agenda. 
Uh, remember, this is a no action, so you would have to offer a substitute motion. In this case, you could offer to keep the extension in place, but um, uh, I believe no one on that committee nor the select board is interested in an extension. So that 20 seconds has expired. So uh, that is now remaining on the consent agenda. And so next up, we have Article 22. This is also a no action article. The original scope of the article is the establishment of a town committee to examine budgetary impact of overnight parking. Uh, the recommended vote is no action. And um, so let's start the timer on that. Uh, anyone who is interested in holding this from the consent agenda or removing it from the consent, consent agenda would have to offer a substitute motion. So we have something to actually uh, debate uh, on later. Um, let's see, you have five seconds left to request that this be removed if you have a substitute motion in mind uh, and seeing none and 20 seconds is expired so that will remain on the consent agenda. We'll now move to article 23. Um, this is a uh, board of youth services updates, which is also a recommended vote of no action. Um, so when we start the timer on this, and 15 seconds left, 10 seconds, if you want to offer a substitute motion and you want to hold this from the consent agenda, you have five seconds, it is going, it's going, and it's gone in that it's staying on the consent agenda. Um, next up, we have article 25. This is a favorable action. Uh, so if you want to debate, so you, this does not require a substitute motion uh, if this gets pulled from the consent agenda. Uh, this is home rule legislation for early voting for town elections. And so anyone who wishes to debate this and vote on it separately from the consent agenda, uh, feel free to push the remove from consent agenda button. Let's start the, uh, the timer on this. I'll give 20 seconds for the first vote, if there's any. Uh, 15 seconds left. 10 seconds. If you want to hold this from the consent agenda to discuss it later, five seconds. Okay, so we'll go to uh, we'll go to 37 seconds on the timer for anyone who wants to uh, effectively second. Um, I'm sorry, that was a point of order, not a. Uh, uh, so let's pause the timer here. Sorry, I misread the point of order as uh, uh, removal from the consent agenda. Apologies for that. Uh, so let's take Mr. DeTulio's point of order. Can you hear me, Mr. Moderator? Yes, I can. Name and precinct. Okay. Uh, James DeTulio, precinct 12. Um, I raise a point of order simply because, uh, although I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to this particular item, uh, for reasons that I've discussed with town council related to um, general law, chapter 268A, chapter 23B3, there are certain reasons why in order to dispel the appearance of a conflict of interest, I would not want to uh, participate in this vote, uh, but it has nothing to do with me submitting a substitute motion. So I, in order not to uh, have to withdraw it or, or request to be withdrawn from the consent agenda and force everyone to have to go through a vote simply on my account, uh, I would just simply ask that uh, when the vote is recorded on this uh, a consent agenda item, that for the record, I'd be listed as not participating in the vote. Um, so I have, I have discussed this with town council and he can, he can give further detail if necessary. Okay, so uh, Mr. Heim, uh, can, can you clarify the legal um, kind of perspective on this? And because um, let me just say first, my understanding is that the uh, the the vote that we take on the the batch or the tranche of articles that remain on the consent when, when we finally get through the list when we take that vote all those votes basically like if if the consent agenda is uh, has an affirmative vote at the end like a single affirm like the, the, the affirmative vote by the body at the end that um, all of the recommended votes essentially uh, from the reporting boards and committees. Uh, 
are recorded for the individual articles, right? So favorable action becomes favorable action and, and so on. And no action is still no action. Well, um, uh, Mr. Moderator, I, I might interject. I, it may be irrelevant. It may be a boot point at this point, I guess, given that three people have <laughs> indicated they want to remove it from the consent agenda. So I don't want to waste anyone's time. If, it, if okay. it's being removed from the consent agenda, then it's essentially mooted by my, my issue. Sure. Okay. Understood. So uh, I, I will follow up with Mr. Heim just to understand procedurally how, the, how that should work. Thank you. Uh, so Article 25 is removed from the consent agenda with uh, three votes. And this is a favorable action, so no substitute required. Um, so let's uh, move on to Article 27. Uh, revolving funds. And this is a favorable action. Okay, and we have a point of order by Mr. Tosti. Let's take his point of order. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Alan Tosti from Precinct 17. Uh, on the last one, Article 25, no one had uh, moved to remove it from the consent agenda at the uh, 22nd point. Uh, so it should still be on the consent agenda. Uh, let's see, the one before 27, are you talking about 25? 25. Ah, so, well, we had three, uh, three votes to uh, remove it from the consent agenda before we even started the timer. Now, you had Maybe already gone through the timer, you hit the 20 seconds, you thought somebody had done it, but it was a point of order. Nobody had moved it to take it from the consent agenda at that 20 second time frame. I see what you're saying. Um, so let's. Uh, oh, obviously it's it's your call. But well, thank you very uh, much, Mr. Moderator. Th th thanks for pointing that out, Mr. Tosti. Uh, let's. Um, that it. Yeah, I, I was mistaken. I was thinking that the timer was uh, was at zero, but we already had some time expired, right? And then the, the point of order interrupted that. Is that right? And so. Um, just for clarity, why don't we uh, redo the vote on uh, or the requests uh, on Article 25? Can we bring that back up? Like in the record, we'll have multiple uh, votes registered for this. And, um, and so we'll, we'll take the, the later one in this case. OK, so let's clear the votes out and reset this. Okay, so this is the home rule legislation again, Article 25. This is favorable action um, related to early voting for town elections. So let's start the timer on this. And we have one request at one second to remove from the consent agenda. So that gives us until 21 seconds on the timer for a second. And we got that. Great. So it is now removed from the consent agenda. And so let's move on to Article 27, the result, uh, revolving funds. Okay, and this is favorable action, so substitutes not required. Uh, so if you want to discuss revolving funds uh, when this article comes up, uh, let, let, you can take it off. Let's see. So let's start. Let's start the timer now. Uh, okay. So we have Mr. Warden at. Time zero, so we'll go until 20 seconds on the timer to see if we get a second vote. And we now have a second vote. So revolving funds is now off the consent agenda. Um, and let's see, let's move up to Article 46. Five. Oh, so note that. Um, that's 45. Um, so I think what's happening here is maybe they're in order of article number, but there's two batches of consent agenda votes. And I was going to go through the majority ones first. So the next majority uh, article, majority vote article that I have on the consent agenda is 46. The uh, uh, appropriation of the PEG access budget. Yep. 
Okay, and so this is a favorable action. So let's start the timer. Um, anyone who wants to remove this to discuss this and vote on it separately from the consent agenda, uh, feel free to um, uh, click the remove from con consent agenda button. Uh, we're at 10 seconds left. Five seconds left. And time has expired. And so that remains on the consent agenda. Uh, before we move to 47, um, there was a request for the, and uh, I know that I, since we can retake the votes um, uh, on these, the, because we had different, we we're following a different procedure really for the first one, Article 6. Uh, and someone to point out that, that Ms., uh, uh, Mr. Tremblay had uh, uh, registered his, his removal request like right, right before the time expired. Uh, and that's not how we handled the other. So for the sake of uh, kind of parity in how we're handling these, why don't we, can we circle back to Article 6 and we'll retake that vote uh, so that we have some uniformity here in how we're applying the rules to all these articles. Okay, thank you. And so this is we're circling back now to Article 6. Uh, this is from the beginning of the consent agenda list. Uh, and this is a bylaw amendment uh, updating the Human Rights Commission bylaw. Uh, and this is a favorable action. So let's uh, let's start the timer on this, and we'll retake this vote, this consideration of this article uh, with respect to the consent agenda. So we have 15 seconds. Uh, I know Mr. Tremblay had, had uh, registered a request, uh, and there he is. So now we'll, let's go to 31 seconds, giving him an additional 20 seconds for someone to add a second vote to remove this from the consent agenda. This is a favorable action, so no substitute motion is required. And we have a second uh, vote from Carl Wagner. And so, very good. So let's pause that and that'll be removed now from the consent agenda. Thank you. And apologies for the, the inconsistency we initially had, hopefully that corrects things. And, okay, so going forward again, I believe the next one that we have after we did the uh, 46 was 47, endorsement of parking benefit district expenditures. And this is also a favorable action. And so, uh, so let's start the timer on this. And again, since it's a favorable action, there's no substitute motion required. Um, anyone who wants to discuss this uh, and vote on it separately from the consent agenda, uh, feel free to click the remove from consent agenda button. You have five seconds left to do so to get that first vote registered. And seeing none, it remains on the consent agenda. So let's move now to Article 52. Uh, this is amendments to the fiscal year 2022 budgets. Um, and this is a recommended vote of no action. So this, if someone is interested in pulling this from the consent agenda, it will require a substitute motion. Um, so let's start the timer on this. Okay, so. Article 52, amendments to the FY 2022 budgets. It's a no action. If you want to, if you want a substitute motion, it's hard for me to imagine what it would be, but people can be creative. Uh, you have five seconds left. Um, two seconds, and it remains on the consent agenda. So let's move now to Article 56. Uh, this is a recommended vote of no action. Uh, it's also from the Finance Committee report. This is appropriations for committees and commissions. What did I say? Oh, this is not no action. This is, uh, this is a favorable action. Um, favorable action on uh, Article 56. Um, so we have a point of order from Ms. Bloom. Let's take that. Uh, Nancy Bloom, Precinct 18. Um, looking at the FinCom report, it looks like the Financial Committee is going to be discussing Article 52 at special town meeting. Um, I Mr. Foskett can weigh on, I believe that the, the article on the special town meeting will supersede uh, Article 52 from the annual town meeting. Mr. Foskett, can you clarify that or confirm that? <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chairman of the Finance Committee. Um, the uh, 
this action uh, puts money back into the override stabilization fund that the town needs in fiscal year 23. The problem is that the, um, the, the annual town meeting is normally not certified by the Department of Revenue and the Attorney General until after June 30th. And uh, if that's the case, this money cannot uh, go back into the override stabilization fund that goes into the cash. It's not available until another year, but by doing it at the special town meeting, it's available. So that's why this was moved to the special town meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. And yes, my understanding is that basically the original Article 56 on the annual town meeting is effectively nullified uh, and superseded by the other article in the special town meeting. So, um, so let's uh, uh, let's go another ten. Since, since we have the, the the point of order, which kind of uh, and we we didn't pause the timer there. Let's just go another uh, fifteen seconds uh, for any folks to to pull this and uh, let's see. Okay, and so we'll consider that re remaining on the consent agenda. Uh, let's see. Article 57 is next. This is uh, appropriation for town celebrations and events. It's a favorable action. Um, and so no substitute motion is required here. If you just want to discuss this appropriation, um, uh, it can be removed from the consent agenda. Let's start the, the timer now. Um, um, so we'll go for 20 seconds, another 15 seconds. Um, any requests? We have one request at, uh, I believe it was at nine seconds. So we'll go to 29 seconds for any kind of second request to remove it from the consent, uh, uh, consent agenda. Um, okay, and we have those. So uh, again, this is a favorable action. So there's no substitute required. We'll just de de debate and vote on this separately outside of the consent agenda. Um, let's see, that next is Article 58. And this is also a favorable action uh, appropriation. This is miscellaneous appropriations. So if anyone wants to discuss, uh, have a discussion, debate, and uh, vote separately on the miscellaneous appropriations, uh, you can remove it from the consent agenda now. Let's uh, start the timer for 20 seconds for the first request. And we have 10 seconds left. Five seconds. And uh, time's expired. So Article 58 will, will remain on the consent agenda. Article 59, uh, Appropriation Transportation Infrastructure Fund. This is also favorable action. Um, and so no substitute motion is required for this. Uh, if, if you want to uh, debate and vote on this separately, let's uh, start the timer for 20 seconds. Uh, we'll wait 20 seconds for the, uh, if there's a first request to remove it from the consent agenda, 15 seconds left. Uh, 10 seconds left for that first request if there is one. Five seconds. And time has expired. So Article 59 will remain on the consent agenda. Um, let's say next up is Article 60, appropriation for blue bikes. Uh, this is also a favorable action. So uh, start the timer here. So because it's a favorable action, there's no substitute motion required. Uh, if you want to take this off the consent agenda and discuss and separately vote on uh, the appropriation for blue bikes. And we already have four. And so that was quick. Let's, uh, so that is now removed from the consent agenda. Uh, uh, next up is Article 61. Uh, appropriation for water bodies fund. It's also a favorable action. And so 15 seconds left for anyone who wants to uh, remove this from the consent agenda, 10 seconds left. Five seconds. 
and it's remaining on the consent agenda. Okay, next up is Article 63, Appropriation for the Harry Barber Community Service Program. Uh, and this is a no action. Uh, so if you want to hold this, be prepared for a substitute motion. Um, so let's start the timer. Um, we'll about 20 seconds away for anyone who's interested in uh, substituting uh, or introducing a substitute motion for this 10 seconds left. Five seconds. And time has expired. So Article 63 will remain on the consent agenda. Let's move to Article 64, appropriation for the pension adjustment for uh, former 25-year accidental disability employees. This is a favorable action. So if you want to remove it from the consent agenda, there's no substitute motion required. Um, Greg? I yes. don't think I have this on the consent agenda. Ah, okay. Um, so, hmm. do you know how long it would take to add that to the consent agenda? Let me see if I can do this. Article 64 appropriation. All right, let's try. I mean, would it buy you time if we circled back to it, or is it kind of, I mean, not really going to be helpful because you have to juggle windows anyway? I think I can just write, actually. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain naming convention that, that we're, like, it has to start with consent, I believe, to be considered to, to trigger that new user interface. Yeah, I think it's consent dash and then like the article number, I think. Yeah. 64 yeah, yeah, article 64, I can paste this in the- No uh, action or favorable? It is a favorable action. And I can chat you the, well, the title of the article. Um, you can just take some prefix of that, it's kind of long. See if this works. Oh, wait, hold on. Consent, consent dash and favorable. I don't know. Okay. Cool. Let's yep. see. And so, yeah, th these are all majority vote um, articles. Uh, so this again, this is Article sixty four, appropriation for uh, for the pension adjustment for uh, former twenty five year and accidental disability employees. This is a favorable action. Uh, start the timer. So twenty seconds if you want to. Uh, separately like uh, debate and uh, vote on this separate from the consent agenda. So you have uh, 10 seconds uh, for the first request to remove it, if there's any, five seconds. And time has expired. So that'll remain on, Article 64 will remain on the consent agenda. Um, Article 65 is next, appropriation uh, for design standards, this is a favorable action. Is it, uh, no. I don't have that on there either. Oh, it's it, that's just the regular? Okay. Yeah, I wonder if some list got truncated somewhere. Um, I wonder if that's gonna be the case for all of these. Can you the spot check if, let's look at, is like Article 70, does that have a consent? It does, okay. 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Okay, so it was just, it looks like it was just 64 and 65 then. Okay, okay. so do you mind adding one for nope. this 65? Okay. 
and I'll chat you the name of that. And this is this is a favorable action. Okay, great. So Article 65, favorable action, appropriation, design standards, right? And so let's start the timer on this. And so if anyone is interested in, because it's favorable action, it does not require a substitute motion. Uh, and we already got uh, two requests to remove it. Okay, so it is so removed from the consent agenda. So let's close that and go to Article 66. Uh, this is, this is a no action article. Um, the original article scope is local option taxes. Um, and again, this is no action. So uh, we can start the timer. And so if anyone's interested in introducing a substitute motion for this um, so that we can speak to it, uh, feel free to remove it from the consent agenda. Otherwise, if you don't plan to have a substitute motion uh, I recommend that you leave it on the consent agenda because there's nothing to discuss about it. Okay. And 20 seconds is expired and seeing no requests, it'll remain on the consent agenda. We'll move on to 67. This is an appropriation uh, related to other post-employment benefits, uh, OPEB uh, trust fund. Um, and this is a favorable action. And so let's start the timer on this. Anyone who wants to uh, discuss, debate, separately vote on this article. Uh, you can remove it from the consent agenda now. You still have two seconds for the first request to take it off. Um, now five seconds left. And it will remain on the consent agenda with time expiring. Okay, so moving on to article 68, we only have three left on the majority consent agenda, or the majority portion of the consent agenda. Um, so this is Article 68 is a favorable action transfer of funds related to cemetery. Uh, so let's uh, start the timer on this. We have 20 seconds um, for the first vote to be registered for to remove it from the consent agenda. Um, 10 seconds left. Five seconds, last chance. And time has expired. So let's, uh, so that will be removed, that, that will remain on the consent agenda. So move now to Article 69, appropriation related to overlay reserve. And this is also a favorable action. Uh, so the, no substitute motion is required for this. Uh, if you want to remove it, you can start the timer. 20, uh, we'll go to 20 seconds, uh, waiting for the uh, first request, if there is one, to remove it from the consent agenda. Uh, 10 seconds left for a first request. Five seconds. And time has expired. So it will remain on the consent agenda. And the last article on the majority portion, uh, majority vote portion of the consent agenda is the Article 70 appropriation uh, related to long term stabilization fund. Um, and that is a favorable action. Uh, so no substitute motions required if you want to discuss this. Um, so let's start the timer. You have 20 seconds, 15 seconds for the first request, if there's going to be one, to remove it from the consent agenda. 10 seconds left. Five seconds. And time has expired. So it'll Article 70 will remain on the consent agenda. Um, so it is 1022 right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, um, open voting on the majority portion of the consent agenda. Um, alternatively, we could have run through the two thirds vote consent agenda, but I'm pretty sure folks could probably use a change of pace at this point. Um, uh, to do something that feels more uh, actionable. Um, so we'll actually vote on this tranche of articles that remain on the consent agenda. 
Uh, Ms. Brazil, can you, um, do you have a list of articles? I know that, like, um, I don't have that in my view of, of what's actually remaining on the consent agenda. Is it possible to maybe share something with, uh, with our display controller um, so folks can actually see what's on there? Um, yeah, uh, my notes are, my notes are not that, um, organized. Um, <clears throat> um, let me see. Yeah. Let me see what I can do. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. We, we didn't plan for showing that. I just figured that we probably want to show something so folks can see what we're voting on since we've removed a bunch of articles, uh, from the list. Um, Apologies that I didn't have something prepared uh, for us to, to view. Um, in the meantime, uh, Julie W can uh, maybe can bring up the uh, the vote on that on the consent the majority portion of the consent agenda. And uh, this is not debatable. Um, if it were debatable, then it would kind of defeat the purpose of having a consent agenda, um, which is to avoid debate. Um, ah, and it says so there. So before we enable voting, let's see if there's something we can show here. Um, actually, uh, if it's easier, maybe. Uh, if there's, uh, uh, Julie B, if there, if there's a list of article numbers that you have that were held or a list of article numbers conversely that were, that remain on the consent agenda, if you're able to give those to me, I, I can throw something together really quick here, uh, unless you already have something in the works. I'm about to send you a list. Okay, great. Uh, and we have a point of order, so let's take that from uh, Ms. Friedman. Um, Mr. Moderator, this is Beth Ann Friedman, Precinct 15. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can. Great. I was going to request that you just um, go by the numbers and tell us which ones either remain on the consent agenda or which ones were taken off because I um, lost count somewhere along the way. Yeah. Yep. So I appreciate that you're in the process of doing that. Like to, to get the actual, this, the, the, the list of article numbers, right, is what you're referring that'd be, to. That'd be Great. If you can give them orally instead of having us try to read them while we're voting, that would be yeah, yeah. for me. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I can do this really quick. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. I have a list here, but I'm trying to figure out if these the, the holds or the remaining. Um, what was just um, those are on remaining on the consent agenda. Okay, so that list I'm seeing of 18, 21, 22, that remains. Yes, they remain on the consent agenda. Got it. Okay, 18. Apologies, this is taking this long. 22, 23. 40. Uh, I'll read them as I go. So we got uh, 18. These are the ones remaining on the consent agenda. Everything else has been removed from the majority portion of the consent agenda. I we see have... a mistake. I don't think. Um... Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that the list is correct. Yep. Okay, great. Yep. And thanks to Mr. Jameson for providing that for us. Um, okay, so I'll go through the numbers. So these are the numbers. And um, uh, Julie W, if you want to, uh, if you're able to present, uh, I know we try to avoid having side by side things that you're presenting, the, the spreadsheet that I have with the majority consent agenda uh, sheet in it, 
um, that uh, I'll have the information in there so folks can see that. Uh, so let's see. Uh, adding these in now. Apologies for the wait here. Um, so the articles remaining on the consent agenda are 18, 21, 22, 23, 46, 47, 52, 56, 58, 59, 61, 63, 64, 60, Six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, and seventy. Um, so let's see. Um, all right. So, uh, Julie W, I just want to kind of uh, slowly kind of scroll through those again at the top. Yep. So if you see a Y in column E. That's the remaining on consent agenda column. Those are the articles that are remaining on the consent agenda. So that's what we're going to be voting on next is whether to kind of carry forward the recommended votes of, uh, of those articles. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that's sufficient. Uh, we have a point of order from Mr. Jameson. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Moderator Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. For people who just want to look at the numbers, in, I, I posted those numbers in the Q&A. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, are folks able to see that in the Q&A? Or is there someone from the panel who can post those as well so that they're available? to the attendees who are not on the panel. They should be in the Q&A. OK. Uh, and so I'm seeing in, the, in our chat here that, um, that we, uh, we uh, Mr. Harrelson has questioned Article 19 uh, still being on the consent agenda. Um, 19. Um, yeah, if, if anyone has any, uh, if anyone thinks that we're in error about these, the articles that are remaining or not remaining on the consent agenda, feel free to raise a point of order so we can clarify. Uh, uh, Ms. Brazil, uh, can you confirm whether Article 19 uh, should remain on the consent agenda or not? Yes, uh, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Uh, that was held by uh, Mr. Schlickman and seconded by Mr. Kaplan. OK, thank you. OK. So I think we're all set here with, so let's, let's go to voting now. And so this will be the majority portion of the consent agenda. Please let us finish this fucking consent agenda. Uh, I'm not sure who that was, but uh, let's keep things civil and uh, uh, polite here. Um, okay, so voting is now open. Um, uh, so in your portal, press uh, one for yes, two for no. One yes being that you approve of the recommended votes, whether they're favorable action on an article or no action on an article. If you approve of the recommended votes uh, on the articles that remain on the consent agenda, press one. If you uh, don't want that um, and you reject the articles on the consent agenda, their recommended votes, if you reject the recommended votes, you can press no um, and that that'll reject the entirety of them. So uh, no is kind of an awkward thing to do here procedurally. So, um, okay, so 
how are we doing on so our time has expired but how are we doing votes cast 191 out of 252 um um that seemed to go pretty was it just one minute that we had on the timer okay so let's just do another 30 seconds since like this is the first kind of real uh vote that we're doing of this magnitude of importance so let's uh let's give another 20 seconds here we have 216 votes cast out of 252 total let's say 223 Okay, well, vo well, votes are still kind of trickling in, so let's just wait a little bit longer. Um, okay, let's, let's just give another five seconds and then we'll close this. Seems like things have, uh, the votes have stabilized. Okay, let's close voting now. Let's look at our results, 99.1%, uh, 227 votes in the affirmative, two votes in the negative. And so the majority consent agenda passes, meaning that the individual recommended, the recommended votes of the individual articles that remain on the consent agenda are now carried through as the votes on those articles. Um, so let's just cycle through. Oh, we have a point of order from Mr. Foskett. Let's take that now while we're... Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, having voted in the affirmative, I'd like to serve notice of uh, <clears throat> reconsideration on articles um, numbered between 46 and 70 that remain on the uh, consent agenda. Great. Um, and uh, Madam Clerk hopefully has noted that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Foskett. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, and let's say let's go back to the screens of the uh, of the vote totals as we cycle through the um, yes yeah, so let's just run through these and as these are running through remember that if you miss your precinct coming up in this rotation because they go by pretty quickly you can always uh, go to the left hand side of your portal window and uh, click on view votes and you'll be able to see the votes that have been cast for everything that we've voted on so far. Um, and anyone, and while we're waiting for this, anyone who's wondering what the notice of reconsideration that Mr. Foskett just requested, um, that's just a, a procedural mechanism uh, that on the, on the night that a meeting occurs before that meeting, before the meeting adjourns, uh, someone who is voted in favor of uh, an article, or in this case, the consent agenda, uh, can, can serve notice of reconsideration, which means that they then have the right to have uh, that article or these articles uh, reconsidered at a later time where there might be more uh, information available, more, uh, more context available at that time. And that's, that's a right of those who've voted in the, on the prevailing side uh, of a given vote. And so Mr. Foskett was exercising that right um, in case some financial matters, for instance, uh, there's new information to consider in the future, like changing some numbers. Um, um, okay, so I believe we've cycled all the way through at this point. And so uh, it's 1037. Let's um, switch over now to the two thirds consent agenda, which uh, um, I'm sure folks feel like they're pretty much done with doing consent agenda stuff at this point. But the good news is that the two thirds consent agenda is much shorter. Uh, there's only uh, 11 articles initially on the two thirds vote uh, consent agenda, unlike the 29 that were on the, uh, the majority vote consent agenda. So hopefully we can get through this more quickly. Um, so let's start with article 31. Uh, so the article numbers are kind of starting over again because these are the these are the articles with a vote quantum of two thirds, which means that the, the voting threshold is two thirds for it to pass. So looking for Article Thirty One, is that on here? Yep. <clears throat> and so this is a zoning bylaw amendment, uh, and the description is administrative amendments, and it is a favorable action. Um, 
And so we'll do the same procedure. We'll, let's uh, start the timer now for 20 seconds for um, any initial request to remove it from the consent agenda so that it can be uh, debated and voted on individually. 10 seconds left, it's a favorable action. Um, five seconds. And time's expired. So Article 31 will remain on the two thirds vote consent agenda. So next up is Article um, 32. And Article 32 is Zoning Bylaw Amendment for Zoning Board of Appeals Rules and Regulations. Uh, this is a favorable action. Let's start the timer on this. Um, and we'll go, we'll wait for 20 seconds for the first request to be registered to remove it from the consent agenda. If someone wants to debate or vote on it separately from the consent agenda, we have eight seconds left. Five seconds. And let's say time has expired. Um, and so Article 32 will remain on the consent agenda. Uh, Article 33 is next. Uh, Article 33 is uh, a lot of these are zoning bylaw amendments because a lot of these are two thirds votes. Uh, this is a zoning bylaw amendment uh, about half stories. And uh, so we have a let's, let's pause, but before we start the timer, let's take a point of order from Mr. Rosenthal. Yes, Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. On article, uh, the, the previous article, that was Article 32. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I clicked the button to say remove from consent agenda and then click the confirm button um, and waited a couple of seconds uh, and it didn't show up on the main Zoom screen. And then you said uh, that there were no, um, you know, that there was no vote to remove it from the consent agenda, which points, which tells me there's a timing issue uh, mm -hmm. among the servers, but that uh, in point of fact, I did uh, place the vote before you decided that nobody mm -hmm. placed the vote. Got it. Okay. So yeah, that, that's fair. So uh, let's, um, um, yeah, let, let's, yeah, that, that's uh, certainly not the, the, the outcome that we want. So uh, what um, can we go back to? Let's see. This was Article Thirty Two, Mr. Rosenthal. The, uh, let's see. ZBA to establish its own rules. That's Article Thirty Two. Thirty Two. Well, let, let's read. Well, so um, why don't we'll, we'll wait for you to vote in? And, and just a reminder to folks that there is like the two step process. So if you're thinking to like uh, um, when hitting that button, like there is an additional step which takes additional time and then there's a delay in the portal as well, which I think is what Mr. Rosenthal is referring to. So yeah, so Mr. Rosenthal has uh, registered his request to remove Article 32 from the consent agenda. Um, and so uh, let's, yeah, so start the timer now for 20 seconds for anyone. Remember, it's a two-step process. So, so you know, uh, try to get it in as, as quickly as you can. Um, 10 seconds left, for, so we have a second. Very good. So. Um, so Article 32 is now removed from the consent agenda. Thank you. And th thank you for uh, pointing that out, Mr. Rosenthal. Um, I'd say, so next up is Article 33. And this is a zoning bylaw amendment about half stories. And this is a favorable action, two thirds vote. Um, and, and so let's start the timer on this. Uh, let's, can we clear the point of order as well? I assume that's the previous point of order. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's start the timer. So 20 seconds or anyone who wants to remove article 33 from the two thirds vote consent agenda. We have a first vote, so we'll go until 29 seconds and we have a second. Okay, so let's, so we'll consider that removed from the consent agenda. Um, and so we'll now move to Article 34, Zoning Bylaw Amendment uh, about porches. And this is also a favorable action, so no substitute motion required. Um, so let's start the timer on this for Article 34. If you want to remove it from the consent agenda, 
feel free to hit the uh, remove from consent agenda button. Uh, so at seven seconds, so we'll wait until 20 second, 27 seconds on the timer uh, for a second vote or a second request. And we have two and three. Uh, so that'll now be removed from the consent agenda. Okay, so next up is article 35, zoning bylaw amendment uh, about yard encroachment. And so uh, anyone who wants to, and this is a favorable action, let's start the timer. So anyone who wants to remove this from the consent agenda, feel free to hit the remove from consent agenda button. You have 15 seconds left to do that. Remember, there is also a confirmation page, so make sure you're able to get all the way through. And, uh, and there's also additional latency, so you know, try to get in as early as you can. Five seconds left. And time has expired, so Article 35 is now removed from the consent agenda. Um, moving on to Article 36. Um, Article 36 is the zoning bylaw amendment uh, related to large additions. It's a favorable action. And um, uh, so let's start the timer. And so you have 20 seconds for the first request to uh, remove from the consent agenda. We have one at eight seconds, so we'll go to 28 seconds for a second request. And we have two and three. So it is removed from the consent agenda. Um, next up is Article 37, Zoning Bylaw Amendment about unsafe structures. It's also a favorable action. And let's start the timer on that. So anyone who wants to remove this from the consent agenda so it could be debated and voted on separately from the two thirds focus. So at eight seconds, we have a first request. So we'll go to 28 seconds. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I think, uh, okay, so we have two now within 20 seconds. Maybe I, maybe I misread the point of order again. So let's, uh, let's pause this timer. We have three requests here and let's take the point of order. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Weaver, you have a point of order? Okay. okay, hi, can you hear me now? Yes, uh, name and precinct, please. Thank you. Janice Weaver, Precinct 21. I just have a question on um, Article 35. I thought you said it was removed and I thought it was staying on the agenda. I didn't see any objections. Uh, let's see, Article 35, the yard encroachments. Um, Ms. Brazil, do you have the, uh, did, did I get that wrong? I, I probably got it wrong, but. No, uh, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Uh, I think you said it wrong, Greg, but in my oh. notes and your notes that I can see, it is remaining on the consent agenda. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I might've misspoken. I apologize for that. Thanks Thank for Thank you, the, that's all I want to know. Thanks, so right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I might have confused remove and remain. Those mean different things. Okay, so uh, so we had three requests to remove Article 37 from the consent agenda. Uh, so that is now removed. Uh, and next is Article 40, zoning map amendment, expand business districts. And this is a recommended vote of no action. So there's nothing to do here unless someone wants to suggest a or offer a substitute motion. Um, uh, so let's start the timer on this. Uh, so if someone is interested in offering, okay, so let's pause the timer and take a, a point of order from uh, Ms. Uh, Phelan. Uh, name and precinct, please. Hi, can you hear me, moderator Michelle Phelan, um, precinct four. Yep. Um, did, I, did I miss you skipping over Article 38 and 39 to get to 40? I thought I didn't didn't hear 38 and 39. Did I miss it? <laughs> oh, so these are the um, it's only specific articles that were pre-populated onto these these two batches of consent agendas, oh. one for the majority vote and one for the two thirds vote. So the numbers kind of jump around. Sometimes they're sequential, but they often jump around because uh, they were because they were pre-selected. And so this is just giving folks an opportunity to just kind of yank them off the consent agenda 
uh, if they disagree with, uh, with you know, the determination ahead of time to put them on there. Got it. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks for, thanks for the question. Um, so why don't we reset the timer on this? Uh, and so let's start. So this is Article 40. It's a no action zoning map amendment, expand business districts. Uh, so if, um, if someone is interested in uh, uh, proposing a substitute motion, uh, they can remove it from the consent agenda. They could, uh, yeah. And so someone, so 20 seconds has passed. So that will remain on the consent agenda. And so next up is Article 45. This is zoning bylaw amendment uh, related to appeals. It is also a no action. Uh, so let's start the timer on this. And so 20 seconds now, if anyone who's interested in producing a substitute motion for this no action article um, can request to remove it. Um, okay, so we have one, so that's at 15 seconds, we'll go until 35 seconds to give it an additional 20 seconds for anyone. And we have a second there, a second request. So article 45 is removed from the consent agenda and we'll look forward to Mr. Warden's uh, substitute motion when Article 45 comes up in the natural order. Um, Article 53 is next. Okay, and this is appropriation related to financing of construction or of sewers and sewage facil sewerage facilities. And this is a favorable action. Uh, so let's start the timer. Anyone who wants to pull this off of the consent agenda, we have one request at Six seconds, we'll go to 26 seconds, and we have two. So it is now removed from the consent agenda. And the last one on the consent agenda for the two thirds uh, vote articles is Article 54 appropriation related to financing of construction or reconstruction of water mains and water facilities. This is a favorable action. Um, so no substitute motion is required. If you want to discuss this, let's start the timer. And so we have 20 seconds uh, for an initial request. And so we do at six seconds, we'll go to 26 seconds uh, for any second request. And we have one, great. And so that will be removed from the consent agenda. So if, um, so it's 10.50, I think we have just enough time to, to vote on the two thirds vote consent agenda, and then we'll be, totally done with consent agendas uh, for, uh, for the year. Um, at least I don't think we're going to have one for the special, but I have not decided that yet. Um, OK, so let's open voting now on the 2 thirds vote consent agenda. And so this will require a 2 thirds vote to pass. Um, and then that vote, if it passes, will carry through to all the other votes. And this is not, this is not debatable um, because that's the nature of consent agendas. Okay, so go to your uh, town meeting portal and we have a minute timer, but I'll give a little bit more time if, if necessary. Um, let's see. If you're having trouble voting, you can, or if you need technical support, you can get help button in the portal, but for voting in particular, um, you can enter your vote in the Q&A if you need to, if you're having trouble with the uh, virtual town meeting portal, um, uh, or you can, you can call uh, the town clerk, Ms. Brazil, at 781-316-3071 to get your vote in. Um, and if you are in favor of the recommended votes on the articles and the consent agenda, uh, uh, I realize now that we did not show the articles that were on the consent agenda. There's actually only three. So it was on the two thirds vote consent agenda. I apologize that I didn't uh, visually show those. Um, uh, I'll just enumerate those now and then we'll take Mr. Foskett's point of order, Article 31, Article 36, I'm sorry, Article uh, 35 and Article 40 are the only three that are on the two thirds vote consent agenda. Uh, let's take Mr. Foskett's uh, point of order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think uh, you just answered the question, but nonetheless, uh, can you please confirm that 
Articles 53 and 54 are not on the consent agenda. That is correct. Thank uh, you. So, so while, uh, while voting is open, um, uh, Ms. Wayman, can you just bring up the two thirds consent agenda uh, tab in the spreadsheet, right? And so you get, um, right, so it's just, it's just those three. Uh, I'll just... Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Yep, thank you. So I'll just, since there's only three of them, I'll just quickly highlight these. Uh, these are the only ones remaining on the two thirds vote consent agenda that we're voting on right now. Any of the rows that are not highlighted that are showing in white have been removed from the consent agenda. It's only those three green rows, articles 31, 35, and 40 that we're voting on right now. So a two thirds vote here would carry through to uh, the recommended votes of those respective articles. Okay. 31, 35, and 40. Apologies for not showing that before the vote. We can switch back now to the voting portal. Let's see how we're doing with voting. Uh, we have 226, 227 votes cast. Um, so let's just give another 10 seconds on this. So if you haven't voted yet, please vote. Mr. Moderator, I think several people were having trouble with the um, portal. So I don't know if the staff might need time to finish answering people's um, verbal vote. Oh, okay. And so let's give additional time if folks are having trouble voting. Yep, sorry about that. Um, do we have any update from uh, folks who are working with the uh, kind of customer support? Are, are there kind of uh, systemic issues uh, do we know that we're dealing with, or is it um, just number of individuals with issues? Do we know yet? It was the portal. I think we might need to, to ask people to vote in maybe like two or three waves in the future. Yeah, there, yeah I, I should have requested to do that. There was a, uh, someone had mentioned that earlier, and I did not follow through on that. Apologies for that. Um, uh, in you know, going forward, like when we meet on Wednesday, we'll probably do like odd precincts, give them maybe 20 or 30 seconds to vote and then I'll allow uh, uh, even precincts to vote. We're all set on this end. Thanks. Okay, so th there's no pending uh, kind of support issues that we're dealing with? No, not at this time. Great, thank you. Um, so let's just take five seconds for any very last minute votes uh, and then we'll close this up. Okay, so let's close voting. Okay, so it passes uh, 229 votes in the affirmative, one vote in the negative. Uh, so the two thirds vote consent agenda passes. And uh, that was a, uh, yeah. That was a long slog, I recognize, and apologize for the, the hiccups that we had along the way. We're kind of figuring things out as we go. Um, and so we have a point of order from Mr. Foskett. Mr. Moderator, I move that we adjourn. Okay. Uh, do we have a second, Ms. Brazil? Second. Okay. So this meeting is adjourned uh, at 10.57 PM. And so we at least cleared through the uh, uh, consent agendas, uh, and so we'll, as, as we uh, suggest, as Mr. Diggins uh, moved earlier in the meeting, uh, we are going to reconvene at 8 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, folks should, uh, I ask that you please uh, sign in early to make sure that any uh, login issues or any other technical issues are resolved, uh, so logging in you know, 15 to 20 minutes early at least uh, to make sure that's all in working order. And so thanks everyone for uh, working through this night. I know it was a slog again with the consent agenda. Thanks for all your 
forbearance and see you all Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.